Hello! In today's lesson, we are looking at Chapter 10, Section 4, Other Angle Relationships in Circles. Our objectives are to use angles formed by tangents and chords to solve problems in geometry and to use angles formed by lines that intersect a circle to solve problems. We start with Theorem 10.10. .10. If a tangent and a chord intersect at a point on a circle, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So the measure of angle one, which is this angle over here, is one half the measure of its arc that is intercepted, so it is one half the measure of arc AB. Angle two, which is right here, is one half the measure of its intercepted arc, which its intercepted arc is right here. It, it goes from B to C to A, and so the measure of angle two is one half the measure of arc BCA. Example one, finding an angle measure. In the diagram below, line KL is tangent to the circle. Find the measure of angle KLM. So we need to know the measure of this angle right here. Going from theorem 10.12, when we have a chord inside a circle and a tangent intersect, then this angle measure is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So I can say that the measure of angle KLM is equal to one half the measure of arc MJL. I know that the measure measure of KLM is 4x. I know the measure of arc MJL is 12x minus 100, so I can set up an equation that 4x is equal to 1 half of 12x minus 100. Instead of distributing the 1 half, I can isolate this 12x minus 100 by multiplying by the reciprocal of 1 half on both sides, or just cross multiplying. So I get 4 times 2, which is 8, so it'll be 8x is equal to 12x minus 100. What the notes decided to do was to subtract 8x on both sides, so you ended up with 0 is equal to 4x minus 100, and then add 100 to both sides, so you had 100 is equal to 4x. Isolate x by dividing both sides by 4, and you get that x is equal to 25. So the measure of angle KLM is 4 times x, which is 25, so I'm going to replace that x with 25. And I know that the measure of angle KLM is 100 degrees. All right, checkpoint problem number one is yours. Line QR is tangent to the circle. Find the measure of angle QRS. Theorem 10.13. If two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. The way I remember that I'm taking the sum of the measures versus the difference of the measures is because when I look inside the circle, the two chords cross each other, and so the cross to me looks very much like the addition symbol, and so I can remember that when the two chords are intersecting inside the circle, then I'm adding adding the intercepted arcs. So to find the measure of angle 1, I'm adding these two arc measures, CD and AB. So the measure of angle 1 is one half the measure of arc CD plus the measure of arc AB. To find the measure of angle 2, it's one half the measure of arc BC, which is the intercepted arc of angle 2, and its vertical angle, which is AD. The measure of angle 2 is one half the measure of its intercepted arc, which is BC, and its vertical angle arc, which is AD. Theorem 10.14, if a tangent and a secant, two tangents or two secants intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is one half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arc. In this one over here, I have a secant and I have a tangent meeting on the outside of the circle. So to find the measure of angle one, it's one half the measure of arc BC minus the measure of arc AC. In this circle of over here I have two tangents that are meeting on the outside of the circle. So to find the measure of arc 2, it is the measure of arc PQR minus the measure of arc PR. And this circle over here, I have two secants that are intersecting outside of the circle. So to find the measure of angle 3, it is one half the measure of arc XY minus the measure of arc WZ.
Example two, find the value of x. In this circle over here, I have two chords that are intersecting inside the circle. So using theorem 10.13, I know that the measure of this angle x is one half the sum of its intercepted arc, which is g, j, and its vertical angle arc, which is f, h. So x is equal to one half the measure of arc f, h plus the measure of arc g, j. Since since we're looking for the angle and we're given our arc measures, we'll substitute in the arc measures over here. So this is one half of 136 plus 150. If I take 136 and add it to 150, I get 286. Half of 286 is 143, so x is 143 degrees. Example number three, this time we're using theorem 10.14. In part A, we are to find the value of x. Looking over here, I have a tangent and a secant intersecting outside the circle. I can say that the measure of angle LKP is equal to one half the measure of arc LMN minus the measure of arc LP. This is using theorem 10.14. I know the angle LKP, that's 58 degrees. I do not know the measure of arc LMN, but I do know the measure of arc LP, which is 68. Get rid of the one half by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal one half, which is two. And if you take 58 times two, you get that this is 116 is equal to X minus 68. Add 68 on both sides and 116 plus 68 gives me 180. So the measure of X is 180 degrees. Part B, here again we need to find the value of x. This time we have two secants that are intersecting outside of the circle. And in this case, we need to find the measure of the angle over here. So we know that the measure of the angle is equal to one half the arc QT minus the arc RS. So x is equal to one half the measure of 68 minus 24. 68 minus 24 is 44. One half of 44 is 22. So the measure of of x is 22 degrees. All right, checkpoint problems number two, three, and four are yours. For each of these questions, you need to find the value of x. Here is question two and three. Notice in both of these circles, the chords are intersecting inside the circle. Here is problems four and five. In these two circles, we have tangents and secants intersecting outside the circle. All right, that's it from me. I'll see you all soon.